So I got a delivery in the mail and I took the box and I cut the box up and broke it down using a utility knife, slicing down the corners and I came up with all of this cardboard. And so I've actually um, cut it up so that it will be three distinct separate projects. So this one is going to be a smaller book and so this is going to be about one, uh, five and three quarters by seven. And then I have this one, which is going to be seven by eight and a half, roughly. And then this one is going to be seven by roughly nine and a half. And so from these, I'm going to make books, art books. And I learned this from taking um, Carolyn Doobie's class. And so I placed the link on here so that you can actually look at her free workshops and see how she does it, but we're going to create some books. So come along. The books are actually a lot of fun to make, but the challenge comes in binding them at the end. And so you'll see with Carolyn Doobie, she actually uses, um, she um, pops the, she uses a crocodile to make the holes so that she can bind them through the cardboard and then she takes ribbon through them. And so I was trying to come up with something a little bit different. And for the smaller one and the larger book, and this one I'm actually going to have it um, this way, I can actually use one inch book rings to um, hold them. And then from that I will actually place some ribbon and cut ribbon so that it looks a little bit more decorative. The challenge will be on this thick one because this the thickness of this is almost two inches. So I've decided instead of having a two inch book that I am going to break it down and break it into half. So let's get started. First thing that you're going to do once you cut your boxes is I, I cut them so they're more straight and then I went through and I applied some gesso on to some of them. So this one is the smaller one and I actually went through and numbered them so that I know the direction that I want and also so that the sides are a little bit uh, more consistent. That's just me. You don't really need to do that. But what you're going to do is you're going to apply some gesso. And so I have some gesso in the 50 cent squirt bottles that you would use for possibly ketchup and mustard at picnics. And I get these at the dollar store. And this way I can actually do a line with the gesso and then scrape it down. And by using the squirt bottles, it doesn't stick and dry out and get all gunky on me. And then I can also have control over the thickness of the lines of what I'm putting down. So I'm just going to lay some gesso down on some of the pages, not all of them. So maybe that one. And then I'm going to put them off to the side to dry. I use old gift cards and key cards from hotels that I stay at to apply the gesso. You can apply it this way, you can use a brayer or you can use a brush. The reason why I don't do a brush is I'm not really consistent and really I'm not really good at getting it cleaned and so just in brush preservation I just use the the cards but a brayer works just as fine But 
but you'll see how this one looks like it's more applied like cake frosting and then this one is more evenly dispersed so we're gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna come back and show you about some adding some paint some scrapbook pages some um, ephemera and some things to make them pretty the gesso to dry I'm gonna decide my color palette and so I use magazines for a lot of inspiration and so I've challenged myself to try and use up all my ribbon as much as I can so I went through and I pulled this magazine because I like the colors and I found some colors that I think will complement them or um, or like them. I just buy craft paint um, and you'll see that I have a variety of Martha Stewart, the Delta Ceram Coat, and Folk Art and just honestly whatever color just appeals to me. Also what I do is when the seasons start and the craft stores have the displays for the new color palettes, I'll look at them and if I like them then I'll go ahead and get the bottles. And so I've got the paints here. I've got my ribbons here that I'm gonna use um, for when I bind it. And what I do is I just go through the magazine, flipping through, seeing things that I like. And so I like the cover, over, flip through. And I'm working on three different sizes of the book, so I'm not really concerned about looking specifically for a certain size. So for instance, this I love, right? And so I'm gonna go through, use my straight edge, and this way I'm just clipping stuff. Clipping things that I like. This is the color palette from the cover. So I'm gonna pull that. And the paintings I'll actually include in the art, and so I'll add them to it because I just love those. And so I'm gonna flip. I mean, look at this. Even the covers of products for the adverts are really pretty. And so this is pretty, but it's not really close to my palette right now. I like that. So am I gonna let's make sure that you look on both sides. Ooh, tough choice. Do I like that or that? So I'm just gonna wait on that. Ooh, same with that. And I have something about chairs. So I love that chair. I love that too, so go through like that. Again, so. I'm just going to take elements of it, so I'm not trying to get the entire picture of it. This side was drawn to so like that. And by only taking what I want from here, instead of like cutting around it and everything, I've actually preserved this if I want to do that in, in another spread. I don't know. And then I liked the animals as well. Ooh, but that's a tough choice. I'm not going to use that, and I'm going to use it in that, so I'm actually going to pull out... Animals. 
my daughter loves penguins. So I think that she would be very disappointed if I didn't include a penguin in my spread. And I may not. Just pulling stuff. And so go through and collect your magazine pages. You can use scrapbook pages. I will warn you that the scrapbook pages try and do the thinner pages instead of the um, cardstock because the cardstock is a little bit difficult to adhere and for it to stay on the um, cardboard. And so I just try to use my thinner paper as I'm going through. So I'm just going to keep flipping through here while you go and collect some magazine pictures. So I'm going to make some background papers using just your inexpensive photocopy paper, copy paper, and applying some of my paints. And I'm not going to break out my other palette. I'm just going to use my paper plates. And I'm just going to squirt some color in. And I just like using the plastic palette knives to throw down some color. I just put it down. I'm not really paying any attention to where I'm placing it. I'm just putting it down and I have underneath I went to Lowe's and purchased plywood and so I had them I measured my countertop which is an old IKEA kitchen island that I painted and used for my counter and I measured it and I went to Lowe's and had them cut down plywood for me plywood sheets and so that's actually what I have oops, underneath and so you'll see I can get paint all over them when I stencil and so forth. Sometimes I'll put down paper when I'm looking at maybe holding on to the paper and using it for backgrounds. But right now I'm just putting it onto the onto the board. Let's put some of this pesto down. And I'm just trying to get some colors all over and fill in the paper. But I will leave some white space and if you find that you actually have placed too much paint on the paper and don't have some white areas, all you have to do is add gesso or white paint once this dries and it'll bring that back up to your, um, to the forefront. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few of these sheets. Get out your paint, select your palette if you'd like. Um, what I'm using is Yellow Jacket, Martha Stewart, Pink Taffy, Martha Stewart, Surf, Martha Stewart, Pesto, Martha Stewart, Wild Salmon, Martha Stewart, and then Think Pink. I'm going to create some pages. Then I'll be back. This is my cover, and I'm not sure exactly how, if it's going to stay in the same arrangement or not, but what I want to do is I want to actually lay down some paint on the back. And so I am um, selected linen right there, 
because I don't want the colors because the colors are going to pop from the pictures but I do want some paint on here so I'm going to put some out and I want a little bit more coverage than I did with the gesso so I've got a lot of paint on my brayer it's going to suck up some. I can get some on the back. I don't care. So I'm going to cover the back up anyhow with other paint and gesso and pictures and tape and all kinds of other stuff. I'm just moving it around. Trying to get into the cracks. And then my leftover paint, what I'm going to do is... I have a smush book that I actually add paint into for backgrounds. I'll put it in a smush book or I'll put it on white paper or I also have altered paper, usually sitting by, but today I don't. journal that I'm working on as background. This is why the island actually works out really well <laughs> because I can have my journal on here, different pieces of cardboard on here, the copy paper on here, and so I just put it in a switch book. And then I'm going to let this dry. And while it's drying, we can take a look at the different washi tape that I selected. And I just pulled different tapes that I have. And just like my goal with using up my ribbon, I hope to use up a lot of my washi tape. And I don't know which ones I'm going to use, but I have them out so that I can um, play with them and look around. And then in addition to the magazine clips, I also have altar paper that I've taken. I purchase a lot of Nancy Drew books at the Goodwill and then I this is jelly plate both of these and so I'll jelly plate some things here's some others this is just paper um, paints I've laid down but this is taking a piece um, out stamps this is stencil and this is just brayer in the background and then I just keep this. This is actually using paint and pulling through toothbrushes and different instruments. And then this is a stamp on top. And so I just keep all this stuff. I don't honestly have it organized by color or anything like other people do. Um, I have some people who are incredibly organized that way. Unfortunately, I am not. And so I just have it and I pull a different variety of them so that I have them to pick and choose as I'm laying this down. I don't really put a lot of thought in terms of, I don't focus and get all frustrated over it. I either, it either works for me or it doesn't. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, we are going to lay down some color on this which will be, or not color, will color paint also, but we're also going to cut up, this is one of the lovely sheets that I did with the different paints, and then I've got this to pull out some color. And so I'm just gonna take a look and see what I like. Mm 
and cut. And then to lay that down, I purchase glue sticks when they go on sale at Target or Staples or any office supply store. Back to school time, I purchase these in by the container full. And so I'm going to just put some tape on this, or not tape, but glue this down, put some glue on. Oops. Glue that falls off, flips over, and just push it back down. Now for pieces, if I was doing something that I wanted to last a long, long time, like a scrapbook page, um, that's something that I'm giving as a gift, or something that is going to hang in my studio, I will use archival glue. I only use, I don't use the matte medium um, when I'm laying down large backgrounds. I'll use the matte medium for attaching the washi tape onto it, but the glue stick works perfectly fine for me because in all honesty, the cardboard is not archival. So this is fine. Stuff that flows off to the side, I just put back in, put the cap on. And then when I look at this, deciding what else I'm gonna put on this, these. I've got this. This is nice. habit of just putting the cap on every time I finish because I've caught myself forgetting and then coming back into my studio and <laughs> being um, surprised with the glue stick being dried out. So just getting into the habit of it. And then for this, um, looking for something that looks a little bit interesting. So I'm actually going to take more of the text than I am the paint. And then these small pictures are actually they are pictures that I got off of the internet that I ran or I copied, printed out on my copier where I affixed deli sheets to the white paper, white copy paper, ran it through the printer and came up with these. And so I have a whole bunch of these that I just have lying around for purposes just like this. Pulls out, put it right there, and then gently use your gift card or your key card to run over it. And then what I'll do once that is finished, do this. Then I'll add some paint, some more paint some other layers. So I'm going to add some of the green. Shake it up. Put it down. Use my lovely plastic utensils. So I'll get rid of that. I'll run it down the edge. 
maybe I want to put a little bit more in there so I can get rid of the background. It's not completely finished, but I'm to a point where I need to let this dry, and so I'm going to work on some of the other sheets, and then I'll come back. So this is what I have so far. I've got my cover with the cat, the cute cat, my favorite. I'm not sure what title I'm going to put on here, but um, I have this effects, and then I have this two-page spread that I like with the background papers that I created, put some paint on top with the transfer, and then I've got this, and you can't, I don't know if you can tell, but this actually is the wild salmon in the background with a white pearl essence kind of paint that I've put back there. And then I've got this spread that I'm working on, and actually this is going to have the penguin coming through, but I'm going to lay some more stuff back here, and then I haven't really decided what I'm going to do on the back. So what I've decided for this spread right here is I'm going to do some jelly plate and um, jelly prints. So I have my jelly, and this is actually what the one that I created, or I... Um, actually made myself and it's round it's um, pretty thick on the outsides of it and I keep my jellies the ones that will fit in this very inexpensive cookie sheet it's I think it was a dollar and the reason why is because the paints that way can fly off and then I can um, clean it and move it and everything and so I just like to have it because then I can just transport it here and there and it's, it's just easier for me. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to use my round one and I'm I really like this stencil and this was a Martha Stewart stencil that I got on sale at Michael's see Martha Stewart crafts and I and it kind of looks like it would be the wallpaper for behind this eh, to me at least and so I'm, I'm just gonna do some jelly printing because I just love doing the jelly printing. I don't I didn't clean this one. Probably should have, but I didn't. Um, so I'm gonna lay some paint here. Put some paint down. wiping it off on my smush plate and then just a little bit of green kind of give it that kind of that deco look so I'm gonna put my stencil through here whoops and put it down and so what to be careful for is because of the plate you have to make sure that it's down and so if you're gonna go ahead and do the the print right here then I would recommend that you go and you just you know kind of use your finger and push it all down but I'm actually going to use my swish book my journal that I've been adding the paints to and I'm just going to put it down like this And it pushes it down. Oops. And it gives me that, which is background. So I don't want looking for perfection. And then I'm going to lift this up. And let's see what it looks like. We can always paint over it if we don't like it. think I like it but that's okay uh, you know I tried it so now what do you do with this well you have some um, options of what you can do I can lay some more paint down and pull another print I 
actually going to put a little bit more blue paint on this. This way this time, put it down, and then I'm going to do this. And again, if I don't like it, I just paint over it. That's what's great about, about this. So this is a, looks a little bit cooler and more interesting and more dynamic. And so now we have this. I don't know if you can see the imprints of it. So what I can do is create my own washi tape. So I can take my package ready tape that I know packages in and then I pull it off, lay it down and it will pull up the paint. And I like that so I'm going to leave it there. I actually put it on my Ikea octopus to um, dry so I can make washi, my own washi tape or I can take water and spritz it, make it a little bit more wet. And take that smush sheet and put it down and pull it off. And that's kind of cool because then I can cut that up. So I'm gonna let that dry. I can take the other side of my smush book and do that. Well, that looks really cool in the back there. That looks neat. That dry. I can take this paper, put it on top, and so you just create more background sheets. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that. So that's what I do. I just create more jelly prints, pull more prints that are going to be um, backgrounds, and then let them dry. So I have that, and then I have the back. What am I going to do with the back? So I'm going to actually do another print, but I'm this time I'm actually going to lay down some green. This is a sink mat from the dollar store. So it was a dollar. And it makes a really good stencil. And so I'm going to put it down and then I'm going to push it down into the Pull it off, huh? And then I'm going to take this back sheet and let's see what we get. And again, if I don't like it, I just paint over it. And that's kind of cool because you can kind of see some of the textures for it. It was all right. Again, what would I do with that? Well, I'm going to take some more tape. You can really see it on the tape. So I can take the mat that I have under here.
spritz it. Lay it down. Look at that. One dollar for your stencil. And that is super, super cool. And I think probably what I'm going to do is cut this out, let this dry, cut it out, and I'm actually going to put it on top of this. So join me when that's finished. So I let these papers dry, and this is the um, jelly print where it was just that. And then I actually spritzed it with some water and printed it onto, or I pulled it across the other smash sheets that I made. And so I like these even better. So right now I've got these three sheets and I'm looking through the book. And so on this side, I'm not crazy with this. I think what I'm gonna do is pull in this pink, which you can't really, I don't know if you can really see, but I'm going to actually rip this up and put on here. And then on the back for here, instead of using this, I'm going to actually combine the two and rip up. So, let's see. I want to pull across and maybe get some of these blues. So I'm going to just so I alternate between using the ruler and just ripping depending on what I'm actually ripping up but the general rule is that when you are hand ripping which means you're not using the ruler the part that you want, the side rather that you want to use, is what you pull or rip up towards you. So for instance, if I'm going to use this, then I'm going to rip it up because you'll see that when the ripping, the white part is the side I'm not going to use. Now that doesn't prevent you from not using it, it just means that you're going to maybe lay some paint on it or you might like that, but that's the general rule. So I'm gonna, I want this side, so I'm going to rip, and you'll see that it did it a little bit more noticeable on that side. I find myself doing things lined up, either vertical or horizontal, so I kind of did something a little different there. Um, and then I'm going to look and see some white, so maybe I want to do that on top. I like that much better. So then we're going to do this back cover. And I like this part. So.
did that. It's all right. And I'm, this crease in the cardboard is really nice and I like it. So I'm going to try and use it to my advantage. And I think I like the barcode as the back. That's just, I don't know, I just do. So I think what I'm going to do is do something like that. Pop the white. I might end up just covering that back there, but that's all right. So I think I'm gonna do that part. And I just keep collaging until I get a nice balance of what I like. When I am finished, if there ever is the time when I actually say that I am finished with what I am creating and laying down, then on top of this, I will actually put a layer of matte medium so to, to seal it. And I usually do that, where I especially do that when I've got washi tape because washi tape is not, most washi tape is not permanent tape and so it's meant to be kind of as a placeholder and so after I lay down the washi tape then what I'll do is definitely add matte medium on top of it because it's not going to stay. So I like that and so now I'm on to the next face. So now I'm at a stopping point where I want to go ahead and actually insert the holes or create the holes. And so for this, I'm going to use my ruler. I've got a Sharpie. And then I just use my grommet making kit to create the holes. And the reason for that is because the cardboard is actually too thick for a standard hole punch. And so these are just tools that I actually had. And so it just made it convenient for me. I'm not the best at measuring in terms of close to is good enough. And so I don't really stress on that because when it opens, it's going to shift and, and um, whatnot anyway. And so honestly, my ruler has three holes set up right there. And I'm just going to take advantage that the three holes are there. I'm not going to really worry about um, too much here. And I found that the um, opening here is perfect for me to align it up to it. And so I'm just going to try to um, do four. And then this will give me one inch. This gives me one inch and a little bit more. So I'm just going to shimmy it up a little. And this is perfect. 
can actually do it over there so I can get it open. And then I'm just going to draw, oops, of course that's wrong. See, I've already made a mistake. So, eight. Do it at the, do it at. So this gives me one inch, two inches, one inch, two inches, and I will paint over that black mark that I made. Oops. One, two, one, two. And I draw my holes. So my holes are drawn, and now I'm going to actually create the holes. This process is easy, but it's loud. And so make sure that whoever is in your house or in your space realizes or knows that you are hammering or do it during daylight hours. And you'll see the holes. So I have my holes punched. You'll see through there. You can see some light of day between them. And so I'm going to connect them using the one inch oops, book rings. And so you'll see how it, they just open up. Now I can purchase larger rings if I want um, to add more pages to this or if I want it to be able to open even farther than what it does right now. What I like to do is I add, like to add ribbons to the rings to make them decorative. And so following the challenge of trying to use all my ribbons that I have. I have my ribbons here, and so I'm gonna cut off. Oops. Cut off four inches. And then I just tie it on. Like that. So I have my ribbons attached on the, the rings. And so for an initial flip through, we have the cover. And then we have this page, second and third. Oops. And this page. and then the back. So I'll keep adding things to it. Um, I'll be stamping some things into it and adding some more washi tape 
and just more collage and everything. But what I want to do at this point is after you create this, this is a work of art, even though it may not feel like a work of art because it's on cardboard and you're upcycling so many items, the collage from the magazine and maybe old ribbons and so forth, it's still a piece of artwork. And so like every piece of artwork, the thing that you should never forget to do is sign it. And so I'm going to go ahead. sign and date it. So I'm going to keep adding things to it and I hope this inspires you to create your own altered cardboard box journal. And again, this was not my idea. I got this idea from Carolyn Duby and I have a link to her um, to her page where you can actually take her online free courses so that you can see how she creates a book. But in the meantime, go out and create some art. Thanks for watching.